Cindy Dole, and this is Hour 2 of Home Wizards, your radio home for all things home, garden, and life improvement. How the heck are you this Saturday, huh? Wasn't that fun learning about making your own vinegar from plants in your garden? How cool is that? And if you missed it, we'll have it on the website on Monday, I promise. If you just go to cindydole.com, it's all there, all the past shows in the on-air section. And you can even download the app for that and uh, take it with you with your smartphone, which is kind of fun. You can take all the shows and just listen as you choose. So coming up in this next hour, we're going to, well, I guess you could say get ready for the holidays early. It's going to be before you know it. We've already gone from July to August, and it's almost going to be Labor Day, and then, well, you know what's after that. Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas, and you know companies coming, and so we're going to talk with my gal pal, Monica Peterson, who I understand is is taping a show in a very warm Chicago. We're going to talk to her just in a minute about guest rooms and how to get your guest room a groove on, and then later we're going to learn about insulation that not only promises to keep your home cool or hot when you want it to be, but will keep pests, including termites, away. Really? How can that happen? It's this new technology, and I had to share it with you, so we're going to find out about that. 888-539-2980 is the number to call. If you have a question, 888-539-2980. And did you hear about the it tree among Southern California landscapers? Just heard about this. It's called the Palo Verde tree. Maybe you saw it. But as you drive around, you probably recognize it. It's this all yellow and green tree. It happens to be the official tree of Arizona. And the reason why it is so cool, not only because it's really showy and it's gorgeous, But get this, after it's established, you virtually don't have to ever water it. It just survives in the harsh desert climate, and the bark of the tree is green. And so it's kind of like, well, plants and only leaves do this. It can photosynthesize. And so it allows the leaves to be very, 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 very small and decreases the water loss through evaporation. And so there it becomes a complete water-saving tree to consider for your landscape, the Palo Verde tree. Who knew? Well, let's go from the warm climate of Southern California to the equally warm of Chicago, where we're going to learn about getting ready for the holidays. Be our guest. Be our guest. Put our service to the test. Tie your napkin around your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. All right, well, with that, we bring in my friend Monica Peterson, your friend, too, from HGTV's uh, Design to Sell. And, and Monica, I understand that you're taping a Christmas special, and it's very hot <laughs> in Chicago. Yeah, I'm doing a Christmas shoot, and it is hot. it's so hot here and so humid, and trying to get in the spirit is, like, <laughs> impossible. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I'm sure you still look fabulous and aren't complaining to anybody else. <laughs> Right. Well, I, I'm. Well, I can't say I'm not complaining, and I can't say that I look fabulous, but I am having fun. And actually, I did a Halloween shoot last weekend. Um, I was actually in Los Angeles doing that, so I, I'm doing like two holidays back to back, and mm-hmm. I don't even know like where I am or what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, but we'll be seeing that on HGTV eventually, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you will. I did a holiday special in. Um, we shot it in uh, Valencia, California, and we did three homes, uh, three designers, and three days to do makeovers. And each of the um, houses were inspired by like classic Hollywood horror movies. Oh, how fun! It was really cute. It's like a block party. All the houses were in a cul-de-sac, and they were completely turned out. I mean, total Halloween, inside, outside, and then the whole neighborhood um, got involved, and they voted on like which designer um, had the you know the best concept, and it was just. So fun, and you know, to do that in Los Angeles was awesome because I mean, it's Hollywood. You guys love, you know, you love Halloween out there. Oh, like <laughs> well, because there's so many. Right? Well, we do like a whole month of countdown to Halloween because there's so many neighborhoods that just really go all out. A lot of folks that are working in entertainment that are either lighting, you know, designers, sound effects guys, and they then you know use their skills to turn their entire block into something that looks like a movie. You know? Oh yeah, I mean. It, it was amazing. I mean, I, I, I was blown away. I mean, I came to set every day. I'm like, oh, my God. And I great Halloween, you know, decorations in Chicago, but now like this. I mean, people are, you know, they're putting up lighting outside, and then they were building things and putting it on top of the house. It's very fun. Very <laughs> fun. Really, really fun. Well, so, so but let's shift gears from Halloween to, well, <laughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Actually, I just was loading up my car with props. Um, I'm prepping out for a Christmas shoot tomorrow in Chicago. Yeah. And um, there's a, even now, there's already a lot of great stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah, really cute. Like, Crate and Barrel had a lot of darling um, red and white, uh, like, striped and printed, um, like, mugs and plates and 
Pier One had awesome, uh, like like kind of an aged red um, collection of lanterns, and you know I didn't know what I would find right now, and you know when I when I prop things, I try to go to stores that all of us can go to, you know that anybody can go into and get stuff, and how uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving are, are already you know, out there in the retail world, which is good for me, for my shoot, but kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, we're not even through August yet. But, um, yeah, lot, lots of, like, fun, bold, you know, sort of modern uh, bright whites with bright reds. And I um, didn't see a ton of that, you know, traditional rustic uh, Christmas out there yet. Um, however, you know, Thanksgiving is, in my opinion, I mean, it's, it's one of the most traditional looks that we have in holidays. You know, it's beautiful gourds and squash and autumn colors and leaves and um it kind of seems like every year it's predictable and beautiful it's kind of fun to do something unexpected though don't you think yeah christmas is a time you know when people i think it can be a little bit edgier you know with their decor like they go really modern or monochromatic or whatever but thanksgiving i i you know i don't know i think it's just one of those holidays that because of the season the time of the year and how you know a lot of parts of the country look you know with fall colors and foliage it just well, and plus, we always are having turkey, right? It's almost like it's so traditional, you can't yeah, really you <laughs> run a rut. <laughs> well, we're also thinking about guests coming over, and I know you did a great um, feature that's uh, coming out in Traditional Home Magazine. That, that's uh, It's titled A Guest Rest, and you have some good pointers, and I wanted you to share some of those with us as we are anticipating uh, friends and, and family, you know, basically hanging out in our home. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I, you know, approach a guest room, you know, I, I, I kind of have a few rules that I go by, and... I try to think, you know, what, what I would enjoy or what I would need if I'm staying in someone's guest room. Mm-hmm. And I like to, you know, go in, if you're in someone's home, you know, you, you just want to give the homeowner, you know, or your family a little bit of break from you the same way you might need a break, you know, from them. And so, you know, I like to always have seating in a guest room, you know, in addition to the bed. I like to have great seating. So you can sit in there, read a book if you want, sit down get organized on your BlackBerry or computer or whatever you're doing. And also like a surface um, to write, like small table, uh, you know, that someone could actually get a little work done if they needed to while mm-hmm. they're in your home. Um, and also uh, in, in, when you see the, uh, the photographs in traditional home, um, I had some bedside tables and they were um, a pair of uh, nesting tables on each side of the bed. And it's a great um, look in furniture, you know, where the little tables go on top of each other because yeah. you can pull them out. These and... are like a mahogany, but I mean, any color works. But yeah, I like yeah. how they're one one size is larger than the other, and you can either use both, kind of in a tiered effect, or whatever. Exactly, and this is nice because you may have your laptop, you may have a, mm. you know a cup of coffee, a glass of water, you know, you, like when you when you're traveling, you have stuff, you know, like the, like at home, you know, you've got your clock there, you've got your lamp, you have your book, but you know, you may go into someone's guest room and they already have their nightstand or side table, you know, decorated, and there isn't anywhere for you to put your stuff. So I really like the nesting table idea for that, and you can also move those little tables around the room mm-hmm. if you need to put it, put something you know on it, you know, when you're sitting or whatever. So they're really versatile. And also just nice, clean, white bedding. Um, when you see the room I designed, it, it doesn't have that, like, sterile hotel look. Like, the bedding has, you know, like, like the shams have a scalloped edge. I mean, it's welcoming and beautiful. But I think, I don't know, I love getting into white bedding, and especially if I'm in, a, you know, someone else's home. Um, just clean, you know, nice, you know, the, the best thread count you could afford and just simple you know, white bedding, and and also offer, you know, a variety. Like some people are really cold at night or some people are warm. So, you know, a blanket and a duvet is a good idea so that your guests have options, you know, when they go to sleep. Um, And also just like keeping like the color palette neutral is, Mm -hmm. I think, pretty nice for guests. Like right here you have, it's very much, it's kind of like a beige and a white with maybe a very dusty soft blue. Yeah, it's just sort of tone on tone, and then I just popped it up with a little color, you know, and some mm-hmm. accent pillows, like roll pillows on the bed and on the chairs. But overall, you know, when you're decorating with neutrals, it's like, you know, the floor is a sisal. It's very neutral, and the wall color is, you know, probably five, you know, shades lighter than that. And all the tones are very close to each other, and that's how you get that look, like just real neutral, real simple, serene, and it's very, very restful. And, you know, for your guests, I think I think it's a really good idea. Um, I mean, I love to design with fabrics, and I think bedrooms are just the, the best place to introduce beautiful textiles. And, and you know, even though I've, I'm, I've dressed that room with lots of draperies and I've got, a, like, a canopy over the bed, it's still somewhat gender neutral. It's not crazy feminine, 
it's just like clean. Yeah. You know, just, it, just sort of layered. It's restful. And, well, you want us to feel like a king and a queen, is what you, yes. is, you're such a good hostess. Well, don't go away, Monica. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, with more ideas uh, for, of course, companies coming before you know it for the holidays, some great guest room ideas. And uh, also, we might kind of give you some tips for dorm room decor because, you know, it's that back-to-school college thing time. And I remember, I'll never forget my dad taking all my clothes up those steps at USC. <laughs> and the decor, well, not so much. Anyway, we've evolved since then. Home Wizard Cindy Dole on KFWB News Talk 980. Yeah, helping you enjoy those spaces you call home. That's what we do here every Saturday from 2 to 4. Home Wizard, Cindy Dole here on KFWB News Talk 980. And so glad to have you with me because Monica Peterson, you know her from HGTV's Design to Sell. Uh, All-around great designer gal and so fun to have you, Monica. So, uh, <laughs> you nutty girl. you designer gal. You're, 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 you're a designer you. gal, gal pal. <laughs> you know, uh, here's an idea that I just heard about that I think would be so much fun for a guest room or for really anything. And it, it kind of speaks to Southern California, but why not anywhere? Because it's kind of the resort feel. Why not have, whether it's in the guest room or somewhere nearby, a basket of colorful flip-flops? That's a great idea. And so you then, know, yeah, they're yeah. cheap, and everyone gets their little pair, and then they can lounge around. And you know when you're in a hotel, you have your the, the robe is hanging there. You could yeah. even get a couple of robes, and here they have their flip-flops. Why not? So cute. And you know what? Like it's, it, feel, it's more, it feels more sanitary than those little white terry cloth. <laughs> well, yeah. Too. Yes. And they it's can take them home. Yeah. They can yeah. take them home. <laughs> but, I'm doing it. <laughs> well, we're talking about guest rooms uh, because we have a lot of great ideas thanks to you. And um, how else can we make these friends and family folk feel welcomed and relaxed? I mean, do we need to have music and TV in the guest room? You know, I don't think you need to. I mean, if you've got, if you're wired for it, mm-hmm. do it. Um, I think if you don't have a television, I don't think you have to go as far to put it in. I think just having some great books, and and I usually do picture books, like coffee table books, because most people don't dive into a novel when they're in someone's home for a few days. If know? they do, so it's kind of a bad. Just relax and well. look at. It's kind you know, of a bad sign. Pictures. They're, they're, yeah. they're basically tuning you out because they would rather read the novel. That's not good. <laughs> no, yeah. So just like some easy books. But like the flip flop thing is a great idea. Also, you know, if you can afford to get a couple of robes somewhere inexpensive, that's always nice. Um, you know, in the shots that I did, you know, I have two um, really pretty blue cashmere throws. But like any kind of a throw is nice because they could use it in their room or if they're cold somewhere else in your house, they can kind of throw it on. And use it. I stayed at a friend's house, and um, I thought it was great. She had um, like a, a peg hook, like, like a peg hook bar, you know, number of pegs, and she just had a collection of uh, raincoats, really cute raincoats, and she had Wellington boots all lined up, and they were just for guests when they came over. She had a great property. She was in an area where you know it rained a lot, and I thought that was such a cool thing because people don't think about bringing you know, their wellies on vacation, right. and, and, uh, and I thought that was, was great, and, and that, uh, you know, was an area where it was raining, but, you know, if you're in, you know, Southern California, or even, mm-hmm. you know, Chicago in the summertime, flip-flops is, is mm. really, really a good, good thing. Well, and right. I've been in hotels where they have an umbrella there waiting for you, so yeah, that's kind I of a that. very thoughtful thing, you know, depending and on the climate. toiletries, what about doing that for guests, like just create a little kit, you know, uh-huh. with, like a hotel does with a shaver and shampoo and conditioner and Q-tips and... You know, so they're not asking you at night if you have it, but um, uh-huh. I think people would be really impressed with that. I think, know, well, guess. depending on the hotel, <laughs> the yeah. logo on the <laughs> on your tar- Oh, you go there? Really? There's <laughs> no logo, but you can have it in a little bag and, you know, guess they could take it. Um, that's put your own logo on it, put your initials on it for them. Well, and then in draperies, you say that we, we kind of, we miss it. We, we, we need to think about that fabric to not only keep the, the sun out, Right, but yeah, also yeah, because some people even like my husband. Oh my gosh, if he can't close it up, if it's not blackout lining, you know the poor guy's going to be up with the birds. So you know, think about you know lining your draperies with uh, you know using an interlining and a blackout lining for your guests so they can sleep as long as they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can't do that, sometimes just shears and a simple lined drapery panel will work. But you've definitely have to make sure you've got some kind of window treatment. Um, but, you know, it's our guest room. We don't often get to that. You know, it's not usually first on our list when we're decorating. But, you know, some kind of window treatment is really important. You know, you might like to live with, without it, and it's fine. But, you know, your guests may not. 
and you know they probably won't sleep very well if they think that a someone can see them in the morning or you know b the sunlight's coming in so window treatments are really important and um i I think blackout lining is just great they have blackout lining now that um doesn't feel like a shower curtain yeah because it used to be kind of like plasticky and now it just it it offers you know that the blackout look but it drapes just like other fabric so you could just if you have your window treatments made just ask for it what Mm -hmm. if what if we didn't have a guest room you know a full-blown guest room we we have maybe you know that extra room that's currently a part-time office it's a part-time you know our christmas wrapping storage or whatever or there's no real extra bed what are you liking out there right now whether it's a murphy bed or inflatables or anything that's catching your eye that kind of will work and it isn't too tacky well you know air mattresses are actually comfortable those mm-hmm. blow-up air mattresses, mm-hmm. they, they, they totally work. And, you know, if you don't have a guest room, you know, it just means that maybe your, tight, your quarters are a little more tight anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's easy to store an air mattress. You know, and once the air is out, they're super easy to store. They don't take up very much room. And they are comfortable. So I think, you know, just letting your guests know, this is my office, so I'm going to have room for a bed. But, you know, be prepared. You're going to be on an air mattress. And, you know, it's not a bad idea either because sometimes people don't know where the heck they're going when they're in someone else's house. You know, and they get up, get up in the middle of the night and they're bumping into things. Yeah. If you're on an air mattress, you're a little closer to the ground. It's good for safety. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, by, well, I guess we should have flashlights then on by the nightstand. And, and... That would probably be a good idea. That would get really good credit. Yeah, sure. And then some motion detector lights in the room. <laughs> <laughs> this way to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like the things we do for our older parents, we could do for our kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, speaking of smaller quarters, that, that kind of segues into dorm rooms. How, how was your experience in college? Were you in a dorm room? I was in a dorm room, and, you know, I love my roommate, but it, you just, you're, it's tight quarters. I did not know how to, I mean, I had, you know, a bedroom with two dressers and a closet, and you go into the dorm room, and you're, you're going, oh, my gosh, this is it. You know, not much space. Yeah. So, you know, you got to bring in furniture. That it's just all about storage. None of it's about beauty. It's just like function, function, function. And mm-hmm. I mean, the good news is there's a lot of stuff out there that's inexpensive. I mean, I, I always want to just go to Ikea. It's mm-hmm. such a great place, you know, for, for dorm room stuff. Um, you know, Target. And, and just, you know, think about creating storage all the way up. Vert- it's all about the vertical, like the Swedes do, right? Yes, and exactly. And I love to, because uh, there's never enough closet space, and here you are, a girl in college, and my gosh, I mean, this little narrow thing that's not even enough to put a, know. You know, a broom in, uh, you're trying to put all your clothes and stuff it in there. I found this great thing at the container store. It's, a, it's basically an extender that it, that it's a it's a pulley almost like a trapeze um bar if you will mm-hmm. that hooks over with these metal claps over your existing uh, pole inside the closet, right? And then down below, it has on the sides these pulleys and down below an additional um, rack that can extend as wide as you like or as narrow as you like. So now you have basically this option vertically and horizontally to double the size in your closet. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I did a project with that last year in New York, and it was kind of the same thing. Like, we don't know what to do with our little closet, but there's a lot out there um, that can help you maximize the space. I mean, definitely creating two levels for hanging. I mean, forget the one pole. Mm -hmm. It's just not enough. Right, right. You know, mix it up, and, you know, under the bed storage is great as well. And or even, you know, kind of if you have a wall, you could always, like, hang a rod and do a drape, and then behind that have a hanging, you know, hanging rack if there was room. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely like working that horizontal vertical thing in, in a tight space is the way to go. Absolutely. And, you know, we also need to have that desk that we're going to be working on doing all those tor- term papers and finals and, and studying late at night to, uh, to function for us. Right. Oh, um, yeah. but, to, but you know, to feel you know, cute. Well, I, I, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We want to be able to focus is the thing. So how could we have something that, that kind of feels hip and cool for, for college, but yet we can focus and have enough room to, you know, to get our studies done. You know, I think those glossy white desks are hot. They're very clean and minimal, and I think they're hip. And then, you know, there are so many cute um, desk chairs out there, um, fun, uh, simple, you know, colorful desk chairs. And that, that's a fun way to bring in your personality to your dorm room. But, you know, when you – like, you can go online to um, Ballard Design. I always think they have great, um, like, mod, modular desk sets mm. that are a little bit different than the typical stuff you might see at Ikea or Crate and Barrel. And uh, you can really kind of design and customize it yourself. You know, if you're someone who likes files in a drawer 
or, you know, if you want a bigger desktop or, you know, and then also think about the wall in front of your desk. I mean, how much desk space do you need? Can you afford to, like, mount a few upper cabinet type yeah, pieces some shelves. on there? Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome having you, Monica Peterson. We're going to see you on HGTV when? Oh. Um, well, I'll definitely be in the Halloween special, which will be in October. Okay. Um, I'm on Bang for Your Buck all the time on Saturdays. So okay. tune in and find me there, and then I start shooting Dream Home in September. Oh, so. boy, busy gal. All right, yeah. well, fun having you, Monica, and we'll check out this article that's all about guest rooms uh, in traditional home magazines. So cool having you. We'll talk to you again soon, okay? Thank you, Cindy. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Up next, we're going to figure out ways to, to keep the well the heat out on a day like today, right, and the cool in, or vice versa when it's colder, and also... Imagine doing not only that, but keeping bugs away. It's an all-in-one product, and we're going to find out how does it do that. Home Wizard Cindy Dole here on KFWB News Talk 980.